In this video, I want to give you an intuitive understanding for what's going on when we declare L1 like this and L2 like this. As you might remember, this is just the same as saying L1 copy. So L1 copy just means creates a create a list whose contents are the same as L1 but which is a new list. And this is just saying start from the first element of L1 and end at the last element of L1. So this and this, they're just the same thing. Now let's start with declaring L1 like this. What does it do? So the first thing this does is it creates the inner lists in memory. So rather than draw them in the memory table, and you can go back to the exercise C video in order to see how that works, what I'll do is I'll just draw a list that's like that, one, two, and draw a list that's like that, and if they're in blue, think of them as things that live in memory. So we place this guy in memory, and we place this guy in memory. And finally, we need to place the whole list L1 in memory. The way we do it is we'll say, okay, so L1's first element is this guy, so that's going to be like that, and L1's second element is this guy, so that's going to be like that. So now let's look at this guy. So here we're creating a new list, L2, so we'll place it here. But here, rather than create a new list with the contents 1, 2, we're just saying L1 at 0. What that does is it makes it so that 1, 2 is also referred to from L2. And this 3, 4 will be referred to from L2 at 1. So what this means is that when you say L1 at 0 at 1, for example, is equal to 5, what do you do? Well, you go to L1 at 0 at 1. That's this guy. Now, obviously, that's going to be exactly the same as L2 at 0 at 1. Because if you follow L2 at 0, you'll get to the same place. If you modify this, then this will be modified as well, so that this will be true. On the other hand, if you say something like L1 at 0 is equal to, let's define a new list, let's say 6, 7, what will happen? Well, what will happen is that this list will be put into memory, so we'll need to put a new list in memory, 6, 7, and here you're saying L1 at 0 is this new list, so that means that this arrow will now go like this. L2 at 0 would be unaffected. So changing the contents of L1 at 0, of the list L1 at 0, will affect L2 at 0, at least until you do this. However, changing L1 at 0 will not affect L2 at 0. This is because L1 and L2 are not aliases, they are different lists. On the other hand, L1 at 0 and L2 at 0, L1 at 0 and L2 at 0, are initially aliases, at least until we've made them different by saying L1 at 0 is equal to a new list. So, okay, now let's consider what happens when we do the two-level deep, deep copy. So, let's erase this. And let's write out the deep copy code. So how do we do that? So we say for sublist in L1, and here initially L2 will be the empty list, we'll say L2.append sublist, and that would be a copy of the sublist. So let's go through this and see what happens. So rather than do this, we'll do this. 
So, okay. The first thing that happens is, again, we place 1, 2, and 3, 4 in memory. So here we'll place the list 1, 2 in memory, and here we'll place the list 3, 4 in memory. What do we do now? We create the list L1. And initially, it'll be like that. Now we go L2 is equal to the empty list. That means we create a new list in memory, and initially it's going to be empty, but we'll make it a little bit wide so that there is space to add stuff. Now we're going for sublist in L1. So what does it mean? It means that initially we say sublist equals to this guy. So sublist and this guy are aliases. And then we append a copy of the sublist. And now we say sublist and this guy are aliases, and then we append a copy of this guy again. So what happens when we get to this statement? Well, the first thing that happens is we create a copy of sublist, so a copy of this guy, in memory. So we create another copy of 1, 2. Any time that we have this kind of notation, we create a new list. What happens next? Well, it gets put in memory, like that, because we're appending it to L2. Next sublist is this guy. What happens when we append it? Well, it goes here, and here we'll have a comma. So we'll create a copy of 3, 4, sorry. There will be a comma here, and now we're appending 3, 4, because sublist is 3, 4. So that's going to be like that. Now, obviously, L1 and L2 now are completely independent because this is one copy of 1, 2, and this is another copy of 1, 2. This is one copy of 3, 4, and this is another copy of 3, 4. Modifying L1 at 0 at 1 will not affect, for example, L2 at 0 at 1. Great. Now, let's consider the third example. So, the third example would look like this. We'll define the list L1, not like this, but slightly differently. We'll have another level here of nestedness in the lists. How will that affect things? Well, the first thing that we need to do, again, is to create all of those lists in memory. What would that look like? Well, let's create the list 1, 2. That's going to be like that. Let's create the list 3, 4. That's going to be like that, no problem so far. And now we need to create this list, which contains this element. So we'll create a new list, which will not contain a number, it will contain a list. So it will con contain the address of this guy. So that's going to be like that. So, okay. Now let's suppose that we do the same thing. So we'll define L1, and L1 is going to be this guy, and it's going to be 3, 4, like that. What should we do now? Now we're creating an empty list L2, so that's going to be like that, and initially L2 is going to be empty, and now what we'll do is we'll go and append the copy of this guy and the copy of this guy. So, okay, so initially sublist is this guy, and here we are creating a copy of it. So, what's a copy of this guy? Well, that's a copy of this guy. So, it's going to be a list that's like that, and this list also points to 1, 2, because this and this there are separate lists. However, the list inside them, there is only one copy of it. We're not creating a copy of 1, 2 by using sublist copy. We're creating a, a list whose one element is the list 1, 2, but there is only one list that's 1, 2. We're not creating a copy of that. And you see how that would be a problem, because if we modify this 1 or this 2, then that would affect both L2 and L1. Anyway, the first element of L2 is going to be this just newly created copy. 
that's going to be like that. What do we do now? Well, now sublist is 3, 4. So we create another list with the same contents as 3, 4. Let's put it here. And this is the way things are going to be pointing. So this is this list, and this is this list. So you can see that if we were to modify L1 at 0 at 0 at 0, this guy, then that would affect L2 as well. On the other hand, if we were to modify L1 at 1 at 0, this would not affect L2.